Hello, I am Splash Samantha, or Sam. And I'm Vanadium Valor, uh, or Kristen. Our music video, Butterfly Weeds, was created during our Germany study abroad for the spring semester. Germany was a lovely place, and we're so glad we got the opportunity, but... Unfortunately, as you might have figured out, uh, we were sent back early because of the coronavirus. Thank Corona. But without further ado, let's jump straight into the concept. So I was in charge of visual development, uh, aka concept. So for context, our semester project prompt was access points. We had to create a work that spread awareness of a certain target audience, and we chose PTSD and sexual assault victims since that's something we're more personally aware of and could put our own flair and touches into the video for and make it more raw and correct. And as to why we chose butterfly weeds and monarch butterflies as our symbolism, uh, basically uh, butterfly weed when given to someone means leave me or let me go. Specifically with those who deal with PTSD, this can refer to uh, their intrusive memories, or if they are unable to separate memories from reality, it's that physical person, that physical experience. Um, personally, uh, when I was looking up the flower, I leaned towards specifically uh, Mexican butterfly weed because I thought it looked very pretty. Butterfly weed in general attracts monarch butterflies, um, and these monarch butterflies uh, symbolize change. Even going deeper, an orange butterfly is a call to stay positive and to reconnect with joy, and a black butterfly means entering the void or the unknown for new growth, which are all tenants of someone who is trying to recover from PTSD. So our character is named Mary Posa, which means butterfly or moth in Portuguese. We don't really have a strong history other than that she's of Hispanic descent, and she's currently living somewhere in Arizona or Utah for college in the Americas. Um, we were heavily inspired by uh, Mexican folklore of El Cacoy, which is their version of the boogeyman, and it played a large part in the character design of the jaguar demon uh, that we eventually came to. We pushed for more development of the story of what happened to her and what she's currently facing within the music video, uh, other than um, anything deeper than that. On this note, though, <laughs> let's talk about our artistic direction. So, for the art, as you know, our character design had Latin American influence and shape language. We wanted to go with shy, closed off. Um, she started very short, but then we end, ended up going towards something gangly, long, um, so it feels even more awkward and closed off and shy. And her hair, I really pushed into a big shape language of like a butterfly wings. The art style started out lineless, but we colored everything. Like it started as an animatic and then we did everything else within a week. So everything else visual. Um, so we left it more messy, which actually played into um, the art destruction as she goes farther into the music. Uh, as you go deeper into her brain, as it becomes more abstract that she's dealing with like her emotions rather than the things that happened. There's that whole destruction of art and art concepts. And I also messed a lot with Vocaloid inspiration um, because it's a lot of movement and blurs that play a part in Vocaloid music videos. And on the topic of Vocaloid, uh, let's move on to the music. So for the music, uh, in terms of its instrumentals, I wanted to compose a piece that sounded sad when played slower, but intense when, when played fast. Every instrument I chose uh, was chosen for a reason. Uh, most instruments in the first part were used to reflect Mariposa's history, uh, Latino background, and uh, evolving emotion, while others simulated things like the passing of time and choppy breathing. In the first part, you might have heard a music box, and that music box was introduced for a single stanza before never being used again until it's solo in the last section. The music box symbolizes the recurring memories uh, Mariposa experiences. A few instruments, such as the hand claps, served as a bridge between parts, and of course we had the bass drum which served as the, well, bass for the music. Uh, in the second part, the genre shifts to a more rock tone to really accentuate that, uh, that emotion of rage. And uh, moving along during the bridge, all instruments are reunited and symbolize the fear, sadness, and anger uh, that the victim, or Mariposa in this case, will face during their journey of healing. Uh, if an instrument is introduced before the fourth uh, iteration, its rhythm slash melody will change at least once by the fourth iteration, again to represent the idea of change and that everyone's at their different stage of recovery. All instruments, except for the music box, are used at the final climax. As a side note, the piano piece that was playing during the credits was actually my last time playing my host family's piano. 
Uh, I didn't have time to get a proper recording, so that's why the quality is so poor, but I'm glad it got placed in the video anyways. And, yeah, it was yeah. really good. In terms of Vocaloid, again, I would like to thank Ghost from Ghost and Pals uh, for uh, helping me out and giving me critique, uh, because I do not mess with Vocaloid a lot. I'm still getting into it, and they were such a huge help for me. Yeah. If you haven't already, their channel is filled with such amazing music, and it's such an inspiration for me. Totally recommend you to go check it out. Yeah. Now, on terms of video, which is compositing, editing, and text animation, uh, I took charge of compositing and editing. For that, I used a mix of After Effects and Premiere, uh, mainly because I feel like After Effects is really good for doing details. So I cut everything into shots, and then I moved it into Premiere for ending compositing, uh, so it didn't have as hefty of a file to render. So I played a lot with Motion Blur and Scratch Blur, which is basically a circle blur, to very disorientate the viewer and make you feel like you're going into her mind. And I was in charge of the text animation. Uh, so when I was doing the text animation, I wanted the text to change so as to fit the different parts of the song. Uh, for the first part, uh, where she's lying in bed, uh, I used a sans serif font. Uh, it was called Gadugi. Uh, slightly twitchy text and smoother animation was used in that part specifically to show that there's something that's not quite right, but for the most part it felt normal. But then there's a shift into the second part uh, where I start using serif font. Uh, most of you should know what Times New Roman is. That's what I used. And here I used a bunch of wild text uh, with glitchy animation to match the intensity of the scene. For the third part, I mix the previous two parts' animation styles to show the mixing of these two emotions, where the first part represented uh, her sadness, her mellowness, and the second part representing her anger and her distress. At certain parts within this bridge, uh, I wanted to make the text feel a bit nauseating to look at um, in order to reflect Mariposa's emotions, uh, since that is the part where she is going through uh, her recovery. For the fourth part, I arranged the text into an easy-to-read structure, since that was the part of the song I wanted people to take with them. Yeah, like a mantra. Yeah. If you're still here, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. This project means a lot to us, and we're happy we got to share the process behind it all with you guys. If you haven't already, please check out and subscribe to Sam's channel. She makes wonderful animations, and I'm so glad I got to work with her on this project. As for my followers, I'm sorry I've been absent for so long. Uh, I will be uploading more content very soon. As always, like and subscribe to Vanadium Valor if you want to see more stuff like this. Until next time, salamat malam nerds! Salamat malam nerds! <laughs>